Are my finances cursed? Is there spiritual warfare that's taking place in the area of my finances? We must understand is that world is more spiritual than we realize. A lot of things we see in the Bible that had spiritual forces behind financial problems. For example, a famine during the days of David. The scripture says that first few years it was fine. You know, David just thought it was just weather. But after a while, he started to inquire of the Lord and the Lord revealed that there was a spiritual cause behind a financial problem. We see similar things with like Achan's disobedience to God in the terms of the for forbidden or the accursed things in the city of Jericho brought a calamity on the whole nation and then eventually brought destruction upon his life. When the servant of Elisha took what was not supposed to be taken, he received leprosy. When the disciple of Jesus, Judas, who lived a lifestyle of stealing, who would take money from the offering, it opened the door to the enemy to deceive him and eventually a demon's you know, Satan himself, the Bible says, it entered him. And then, you know, this devil not only deceived him and led him to betray Jesus, eventually he took his own life. The Bible says that Satan has put in the heart of Ananias to lie to the Holy Spirit concerning finances. So if you think for a moment that spiritual warfare only happens in the area of your sleep, in the area of your health, in the area of your emotions, in the area of your mind, in the area of the world, but it doesn't touch the area of your finances, think again. Which area is the competition to your worship of God? It's the area of finances. You cannot worship two gods, Jesus says. You cannot worship God and mammon. He didn't say you cannot worship God and Satan. Mammon is the is the money god. It's the it's the riches. It's the wealth. It's that. It's the deceitfulness of riches, cares of this life that choke the word of God and make it of no effect in our life. The reason there's a warfare on the area of finances is because whoever has the area of finances has your heart. If God has the area of finances in your life, He has your heart. If Satan has the area of finances, He has your heart. You can proclaim your loyalty and allegiance to God all day long. But if the area of your finances is not submitted to God, then you are honestly deceiving yourself. In the area of finances, I want to highlight a few truths. One of them is a blessing and a curse. The scripture says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and it adds no sorrow with it. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. I want you to notice that the blessing of God is not riches. The blessing of God brings those things, but the blessing of God is not those things. The blessing of God is not stuff. The blessing of God is not possessions. The the blessing of God is not bling and bling. The blessing of God is not money. The blessing of God is a spiritual empowerment for expansion to help you fulfill your assignment. That's why God blessed Adam and Eve before He told them to be fruitful and multiply. God blessed Noah before He told him to be fruitful and multiply. God blessed Abraham before He told him to be fruitful and multiply. Jesus blessed the five loaves and two fish and they multiplied. He blessed His disciples and then He commissioned them to go into all the world and make disciples. You can't advance, expand, move forward without a spiritual empowerment that we call the blessing. It's a spiritual reality that manifests itself, reveals itself in natural world. People that are blessed are not necessarily people who are rich. There are people who have what it takes and more to do what God called them to do. And that's really what we're after. We're not after money, we're after His blessing. Like Jacob, we wrestle with God that you would bless me. Like Jabez, we would say that, that you would bless me, that I will not cause pain, that you will expand my territory. And God heard his prayer and God answered that. Through the Beatitudes, Jesus has blessed are the people and He tells us how to receive that blessing. The opposite of blessing is curse. Now, there's different people who can use different words, okay? And there's a play of words that really happens. People who say Christians can have curses and everything. Honestly, a lot of that is a play of words, okay? And you can choose whatever words you want to use for that. I'm just going to use the words that I'm familiar with and why I'm using the word curse is because I see it in the example of Jesus. When Jesus pronounced the curse over if it was a big tree that had no fruit but after the curse was released on it this big tree that was fruitless became a tree that became withered. So everything that's cursed withers. Everything that's blessed is empowered for expansion. In the area of finances when you look at your finance can we just be honest are your finances do you sense an expansion and advancement moving forward? And no, not for our purpose, for the purpose of advancing God's kingdom, for the purpose of helping other people, for the purpose of living generous. Or you sense that everything you try, something is holding it back, something is withering it. There's constant, constant, like, like a chain that holds it back. If that is happening in the area of your finances, you might be in a spiritual warfare. I want to encourage you with few practical things on what to do. Examine first and foremost, who is the master, your money or your Lord? Who is the Lord of your life? Do you worship God or you worship money? Because if money has become your idol, you're not just in the spiritual 
spiritual warfare, you're in spiritual defeat. Many people, when they experience repentance from the idolatry of money, they experience victory in the very area they surrendered and yielded to God. And you can examine that very easily. Are you a generous person or are you a stingy person? Do you trust God with your finances or you trust in your finances? Are you a covetous person or are you a person who lives in contentment? The other question that I would examine in your heart is, is there traces of stealing in your life? Do you currently live a life that is stealing? Do you live a life where you're taking what is not yours? It doesn't matter how how fast you speak in tongues and how many times you've been in church or which, which Christian t-shirt you wear. If you are actively stealing, you're under a curse. You're representing the nature of Satan. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. Jesus comes to give and more abundantly. If you are stealing, you're no different than Judas. You're no different than the thieves on the cross. Now there's redemption for you. There's forgiveness for you. But you must understand your finances are cursed. There's a verse in the Bible that says, in the life of a thief, even the timber in his house will come you know under destruction because of stealing repent of stealing and stop stealing be like Zacchaeus who says I will return four times more of anyone that I ripped off and half of my income I give away and Jesus was impressed with that transformation of heart by seeing the transformation in Zacchaeus's finances but also I would ask are you lazy are you hard working? You know, praying against financial curses, all of that, even giving does not replace the importance of being early for work, being late, you know, after work, meaning you, you're a hard working person. You're a diligent, you're a disciplined, you're a focused person. You do a great job. A lot of people are experiencing spiritual warfare is because they are not working hard at their job. Perhaps you're facing a just demonic attack on your finances. You know, mammon is the word for money, but mammon is also a powerful demon that is commonly per personified as greed, demon of lord of riches, abundance, wealth, prosperity and injustice. In fact, throughout the Christian culture, people have seen mammon as like a spiritual entity of riches. Who rules your life today? If it's the Lord who is the owner of all the wealth, all the goodness, he will help you to get through this season. But if you have made wealth into your Lord, then my friend, you're not just in the spiritual warfare, you're in spiritual defeat already. And I'm inviting you to repent. I'm inviting you to repent of making money into God and make God your Lord. You will see His spiritual blessing follow your life. That doesn't mean you will have stuff. It means you will have whatever you need to fulfill whatever He has called you to do. And you will sense His wind blowing in your back versus His some kind of a resistance hitting your face. May God give you the strength to push through whatever resistance you are facing, to repent of any sin that you have allowed in your life and to understand that you can serve God and mammon. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you were encouraged and I pray God's richest blessings on the area of your finances. Remember, God blesses us so we can be a blessing.